So some of you asked me to make a video about the uh, prism control software. Uh, this week I've put out a video um, which was a review of my prism Lyra 2. And uh, to be honest, I checked there are not many videos about the control software that prism provides with their interfaces. And so I decided I will make a very brief um, video and I wouldn't call it really a tutorial. And I have uh, limited knowledge on it, so you need to understand that this will be really a brief walkthrough um, and how I use the, the control software. Overall, I believe this is a fantastic tool. Uh, some of you mentioned you are uh, switching from RME, just m like myself, I was switching from RME to Prism. And uh, most definitely Total Mix is a, a fantastic software with a lot of functionalities. Um, but I think it's still comparable uh, in, in terms of what it can do. So uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, this is how it looks. It's, uh, I would say, very nice looking, just like the interface. And um, you, you see that we have tabs over here and I will go through those in a minute. But first of all, I wanted to explain this top portion. Um, so as you can see, we have four buttons over here, starting with XML configuration files that we can save uh, to the computer and just open it up, uh, maybe on another computer if we if, if we want to uh, use another computer. Um, and uh, yeah, and we can already open the, the Verify Checker app here, which uh, the Verify can be uh, enabled here if you want it. Uh, I don't want to go into detail here because there are tons of information on Prism's website about Verify. It's a fantastic tool um, and, and really this sets it apart from, from other um, sort of consumer grade uh, interfaces because when it really matters, then it gives you that sort of uh, confidence that you, you, your recording is, is really a uh, bit perfect. So I always leave it on. A uh, very file has a native application and it also has a VST or AEX or whatever you're using, but you can also load it up in your DAW. And then you can also open the PDF manual. I'm not too happy with the manual, to be honest, but it's decent. It, it explains everything that you see here, uh, but not in it. So some aspects are not really explained uh, in great detail. So for instance, when it comes to the ASIO driver that I'm using here on Windows, uh, you can set the latency uh, for the driver itself. Um, and I'm not really sure I understand all the details here. I was trying to, to play with it, but every time I wanted to increase uh, this to uh, increase the performance as well, uh, when I, I was mixing or mastering and I didn't really need a quick uh, round trip latency, I, I ran into to, to trouble for some reason. Uh, not, not every application uh, likes it, so it's not super stable. Two milliseconds works for me. Um, below that you see uh, syncing, quite obvious. You want to sync to the device from uh, digital or through word clock. Um, when it comes to digital, you can use ADAT. Okay. So I, I hope I didn't mess around too much with it. So as soon as I clicked on this button, the whole interface restarted itself, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> there's that. Uh, but okay, you can set the, the ADAT modes if you want to. On the back of the device, you have uh, two ADAT ports for ins and outs. It is limited to 48 kilohertz. Uh, but essentially, uh, I, I would say that's fine. Y you can have eight additional channels coming in and eight additional channels going out. So that's, uh, that's perfectly fine, especially for instance, for myself in the future, I'm thinking about getting um, either, yeah, well, it doesn't really matter. I, I wanna have some outputs for analog summing. Okay, and in terms of word clock, you can set different options and uh, in the uh, clock out section here. 
when it comes to the sample rate and the buffer, you can set it either, uh, you know, typing it in or the the software, for instance, direct or your DAW, uh, whichever software is directly using your Asia driver can also control the buffer settings. Sample rate is very similar to that. The maximum sample rate goes up to 192K uh, in 40, um, sorry, uh, 24 bits. Um, obviously, source you can set it. Uh, there are details in the um, in the PDF manual about the the uh, the, the source you want to use. Um, then you have the the meters on the front of the unit that's uh, very colorful, and that's what most people like about the visuals. And you can set it to either show the output or the input. So for instance, right now I, I've set it to input, which means that if I look over to my right to the prism, then I see exactly the, the gain that I have, which is also here. Um, I didn't touch up on that. It's not super high resolution. It's very good looking, but it, you know, in reality, this in the software is way, way better to control your input levels. When it comes to uh, the LED brightness, you can set it to a multitude of, of settings. Uh, for some reason, even if I set it to dim and I restart the, the interface, uh, it just sets itself back to maximum. So that's one of the things I, I uh, explained in the review video. Again, this is why I explained it's not a big deal. I can set it up when I start my PC, but again, uh, it's it's a little bit frustrating. I don't, I don't want max brightness really. Okay, so going down here into the inputs output section, which is the most important uh, in this control software, you will see the analog and the digital inputs here. Quite obviously, this is uh, Prism Lyra 2. So you only have two analog ins and two digital ins. Um, and if you connect an output pre, oh, I'm sorry, an external preamp uh, through ADAT, for instance, then you will see those appear here. And also as you know, uh, tabs here on, on the top. When it comes to the built-in preamps, you have several options. As you can see, uh, my first line level, oh, sorry, microphone level <laughs> input is uh, is set to mic level. Um, it, it has the overkiller circuit. Uh, I use phantom power right now for my microphone. And, um, and I can also set a uh, flat input, 80 hertz, uh, high pass filter, or RIAA for uh, directly recording a uh, turntable signal, which is fantastic. I can flip the phase here. So now you hear me in flip phase, probably not a huge difference there. And obviously you can set the, the input uh, uh, here, so the input gain. Uh, when it comes to the overkiller circuit, what that is, is it's a built-in physical hardware limiter with a soft knee. So it's not a software gimmick, it's an actual limiter. And what happens is if I talk a little bit louder, then you will see the uh, OVK, so the overkiller circuit being activated here. So you see that, you see that also on the device itself, then that the limiter is working. Uh, an overload, you definitely don't want to be an overload. Uh, what's also very cool is if you want to record mid-side and you don't have a, a hardware box for, for that, then you can just easily press this button below here to set the, uh, the inputs for mid-side recording as well. That's that's really really fantastic. I like that. When it comes to the input, uh, and that's why I was a little confused. The way it works is you don't have a combo jack, and I really like that as well. You have uh, different inputs for the different different signal types. So on the back of the device, you have a um, XLR input for your mic level, that's always connected to my microphone here. And then you have a line level input, which is a TRS jack input. And I can just switch between these. I hear the relay clicking and it just switches over to that input. So I can at the same time have my turntable connected, um, or actually that's my mixer, the, the reser mixer connected to the line level input. Um, and if I want to record that, then I just leave it online. If I want to want to record a microphone, then I can just click here, select the microphone. I don't need to remove 
because it's not a combo combo jack you can permanently leave those in okay you also have instrument input fantastic that's on the front of the device it's a it's a fantastic di input um and quite frankly just a few words here about the inputs you can obviously use whatever type of uh, preamp you want to like a 1073 or an api i think the built-in preamp is so transparent and so high resolution that you don't, you don't really need to use any sort of hardware when you go in digital it's 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 crazy like obviously you, you if you want to color your sound while going in you can do that and uh, I don't know, like for, for high resolution, high transparency, I prefer these, these built-in um, preamps. All right. So that's about it in terms of uh, the digital inputs. You can set it to Toslink or RCA, um, whichever you like. You can also lock uh, the, the digital sync there if you want. I don't want to go into great details there. I, and I don't really use it, so it wouldn't be fair to talk about it. When it comes to the outputs, you have multiple options. So uh, minus 10, plus 4, just like an, uh, you know, an analog. Uh, you can set the levels here. Um, I think I do set those when it comes to going out for some reason to minus 10. Um, for for um, if, if I want to go back to the mixer and use the, the Bex uh, EQ. You can set here the routing pretty much. Um, so for instance, uh, output one, output two, this is where I see, let's say the DAW or, or anything that's running on my computer, it will show up here. And I can set if I want to route that signal to the headphones. If I want to do that, then the only thing I need to do is just click these phones here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, when it comes to outputs, I can also select here what I want to output here, right? So, for instance, uh, the DAW is being routed to analog output 1, analog output 2, but with the other two outputs, I can just say that I want uh, a mixer or I want, uh, I don't know, analog output 1 and 2, okay? So... To be routed here as well so it's, it's very self-explanatory here uh with the digital uh, you can set up up until uh, 48k all the settings here whether you want to use aes or spdif that's an option so it's very very easy to sort of route everything and then at the end you see that this is the bus um, and you see the headphone signal here um, what you can also do is you can set the le output level here. Uh, yeah, that's only showing on the in the output sections. I, I was not sure if that's always visible or not. Um, and below that, you have a numerical value for for the output. Right now, I'm I'm still in the <laughs> I'm still looking for monitor controllers, but it's very hard. Uh, I don't. It, it's very hard for me to find the right one for myself. Uh, but when I will have a monitor controller, I will just uh, put it to the max. Obviously, right now I'm using it as a, as a volume control, really. And it's, so it's very helpful for me because I do see the values, uh, numeric values here. Um, and I tend to use this in the software here because the, the actual volume control knob is a little bit flimsy, I feel like. Um, and then you can mute it here if you wanted to. The lock itself was very confusing for me. So what happens is uh, when you click the lock, then the outputs are pretty much logged to this to this knob. If it's not clicked, and for some reason you click on any of these blue buttons here, what happens is it will this will not be active for the outputs, so you will have maximum volume going on. I did that once. I, I never want to do that again because <laughs> uh, thankfully I don't have hearing loss, but uh, this was that was really a, a crazy experience. Uh, so you, you definitely want to understand that these are actual buttons and not just a blue background text here. Uh, so that, that was that was one of the, the things that surprised me. And I somehow skipped that in uh, in the manual. 
All right, so when it comes to outputs, uh, sorry, analog outputs, uh, one and two, three and four, and if you have digital, then you see all of those here as well. And you can set it in a multitude of ways when it comes to mixing. Again, if I don't wanna use this one, I can just come here, analog output one and two, and I change the DAW uh, from here at the outputs from DAW to mixer. And so here I have a lot of options. I can make it stereo. I can, in, in, in case if it's a stereo input and I want to route it to my output here, then I can use one um, volume control here. And if I want to separate those two, I can do that. I can set uh, left, right panning for the inputs. I can solo mute them. So it's pretty much like a, a mixer really. And you see all the values here below, which again, you can set manually in numeric values. Same thing applies for digital inputs. So anything you want to route to analog outputs one and two, you can set here. So you see all the inputs here and you can do whatever you want with them, just like on a, on a, a real mixer. So this is pretty fantastic and very easy to understand. Um, and then same applies for out, uh, analog outs uh, three and four. When it comes to the phones, you can do the exact same thing. So right now I'm using the bus, so whatever is being sent out um, in, in, in here, um, that's, that can be heard on the phones, but I can obviously set it again to a mixer or just simply analog outputs one and two. Um, if I wanna listen to that, then this will be there. If I set it to mixer, the same thing applies. If I wanna set a custom mix for my headphone outs, then I can do it right here. And then let's say I can uh, mute analog input one. And then in this case, that will not be heard. And then I can set it in the center to analog input two. And in this case, for instance, if I'm recording a vocalist here or the guitar or whatever, uh, and I wanna hear it in mono and route it to my headphones, then I'm, just, I'm doing just that right here, okay? So again, I think it's very easy to use. You have all the inputs and outputs here. Um, I'm not really sure how that, how comfortable that is to use, to be honest with you. So uh, quite frankly, it's good looking. It's, it's easy to understand. But when it comes to routing inputs to outputs, it's a little bit cumbersome when you want to use it with lots of inputs and outputs. So um, it's, it's definitely not for that. Uh, I mean, you could do it, but it's not as convenient as, as let's say, Total Mix or some other softwares where you have a, a matrix which shows a lot of inputs and outputs and you can just uh, mix and match and route them very easily and very quickly. This is more, I would say, user-friendly and it gives you more options in this, uh, in this mixer view. So... That's how I use it. That's how I understand it. Um, if you are curious about uh, anything else that I missed out, please let me know in the comments. If you feel like I made a mistake, which I possibly could have made, uh, correct me in, in, the, in the comments. And uh, yeah, good luck with your Prism interface if you uh, happen to buy one.